it's Chris. Sue and I were up in Home Depot and in the auto aisle, we saw this new product from Ryobi, which I hadn't heard anything about. It's eight, an 800 watt modified sine wave inverter. So let's give it some tests. The unit has two AC plugs that aren't grounded, two old style USB A's that are 2.4 amps, and then a USB Type C with power delivery that's 20 watts. One of the nice features is it has the old cigarette lighter socket that's uh, 12 volts at 10 amps. In the back you can see the terminals for the 12 volt battery cables and you can see the fans that go on when you start drawing a lot of power. There's an on off switch here. You have to hold it to go on or to off. If you just hit it, it switches modes between voltage and wattage. It's displayed here. And there's also a nice little work light here. 18 volt batteries plug in the side here. If you're going to use the cigarette lighter in the car, then you have to plug the cable in here, which is beneath where the battery was, would go. So you can't put the 12 volt and the 18 volt battery in at the same time. The adapter comes with four legs that you can install and then you can just hang it on nails. There's a nice carrying handle and the unit will sit upright on top of the battery. I'm checking it out now with a 12 volt deep cycle battery from my trailer. And you can see now it's showing that it's connected to a, a car battery and it's saying it can do 800 watts. So we'll give it a test. The on and off button, you have to hold it for a couple of seconds to have it turn on. And then once you do that, you can tap it to switch between wattage and voltage. And you have to hold it to get it to turn off. I've hooked up a small ceramic heater. Got it on the low setting. And it looks like it's right around 700 watts. I'm guessing if I put this to high, it will be over the limit. So I'm gonna give that a shot here. I'm gonna put it to high. Yep, and that's too much. If you overload the system, you just have to hit the button to restart it. Looking at the AC power, you can see it's a modified sine wave and that this is what it should really look like. With the heater on low, it's pulling 700 watts and because of this 10 gauge cables that they have, it's pulled the voltage down to 11.1 .1 volts. I added a 40 watt light bulb, so it's up to 748 watts. But it appears as soon as I go over 750 watts, the system cuts out. I put heavy gauge wire between the battery and the inverter and I'm not getting quite as much voltage drop now. I thought the problem might be that the battery can't produce enough amperage so I put two batteries in parallel so that shouldn't be a problem they're both 100 amp hour batteries. I can draw the 700 watts and it's dropped down to 11.6 volts. I wonder if this unit uh, cutoff is set incorrectly or that it's def defective. I was curious what happened if you plugged in both the 12 volt battery and the 18 volt battery. And it looks like when you do that, it picks the highest one, which is the 800 watt lead acid. The interesting thing is if you disconnect the lead acid battery it eventually switches over to the 18 volt battery. The cool thing about this inverter 
is it will run with a standard 12 volt battery or a lithium ion phosphate battery. And that means you can use it with a solar panel and an MPPT controller. In my case, I have rich solar panels, a Victron MPPT solar controller, and the Battleborn batteries. I have a light board that can act as a variable load, and I have it set to about 300 watts. I'm connected to a 9 amp hour Ryobi 18 volt battery, and I'm going to turn it on here. If I switch it over to watts, you can see right now it's doing 314 watts, 315. A 40 watt, add another 40 watts. Fifteen watts. That overdid it. You can also plug the inverter in using a cigarette lighter. There's a port that's behind the battery. I now have it plugged into the 12 volt port, which says it can do 120 watts. So I have four bulbs on, and it's just over 123 watts. We'll check out the Type-C USB, see what the different voltages are that we can get. Little adjustable Type-C adapter. Got 5 volts, 9 volts, 12 volts, 15 volts, and 20 volts. So we'll increase the uh, wattage until it goes over 20 watts and see when it stops. Doing 20 volts at 22 watts. 20 volts, 25 watts. And then it shut off. We're hooked up to the USB A port. It's 5 volts and it says 2.4 amps, so we'll see if we can get 2.4. So, getting 2.4 amps. And we'll push it up and see where it cuts off. 2.7 it's looks like 2.8 amps it drops out. I've got the power tester plugged into the 12 volt cigarette lighter. It's supposed to be 10 amps so we'll check it out here. Let's check if we can get 10 amps out of this. Okay, there's 10 amps. Bulls just dropped to 11.6 volts. Let's see if we, how far we can go over it. Ten point five amps and then it cuts out. I have my ISCO compressor freezer hooked up. I've got it hooked up using the cigarette lighter port. So I should be able to provide 12 volts, 10 amps. It's interesting, the uh, watt meter is all over the place here. But the compressor does seem to be running. For kicks, I also hooked up the compressor freezer using the AC output going through the brick that they supply. And then it goes over to the 12 volt. With the power brick, it's taking a more uh, stable number of 64 watts. The 9 amp hour P194 battery says it has 162 watt hours. With the 9 amp hour battery and the AC adapter, it should run about two and a half hours.
the inverter has these nice little hooks here that you can install and then you can just hang it on nails but I put it here by my router so if I ever lose power I can easily just switch it from the AC wall over to the inverter and be going. So what do I love about this? First, we finally have a Ryobi product that can take 18 volt batteries and produce 12 volts at a cigarette lighter socket. So you can run your freezer, your CPAP, and other things. It's got nice mounting clips, and because of the 12 volt battery option, you can have uh, compatibility with solar panels and MPPT chargers. And I like about it, well, it's a modified sine wave inverter, and I can only get 750 watts out of it. And also the DC watt meter was pretty flaky. What would I improve? I would make it a thousand watt inverter so I could run my microwave in my air conditioner in my trailer. And I'd also make it so that you could turn off the AC and leave the DC on. So sort of have a separate on and off switch for the DC and the AC. It would be great if it had solar charging for the 18 volt battery. If this information was helpful, Please hit like and subscribe and have a great day.